Hello and welcome to this second video on the topic of tan delta testing. In the last video, we answered the question why are we performing tan delta test? And in this video, we will talk about theory of tan delta testing. In the last video, also, we explained what is electrical insulation, why we model our electrical insulation as a capacitor, and we also spoke of an ideal and realistic capacitor. And in this video, we're going to go a little bit more in depth when it comes to this. We're going to see how current and voltage, how currents and voltage behaves in those schemes. We also saw last time that even a small current in phase with high voltage generates a heat that weakens our insulation and brings about a chain reaction which can in the end result in a fault on our high voltage or medium voltage asset. So in today's video we are going to uh, go further and we will first repeat why do we measure tan delta and capacitance we measure tan delta and capacitance to assess the state of insulation and to see if geometrical movement happened in our high voltage asset so we are going to see what is the definition of tan delta and how is the measurement of tan delta done so let's start looking at the voltage and cover current vectors in our insulation. So in a perfect insulator, in a perfect capacitor, we have a simple situation in which we have an AC source and we have our capacitor. Our capacitor, our ideal capacitor, is defined by the fact that the voltage applied on it and the current are 90 degrees apart. So current is leading by exactly 90 degrees. So that's the situation with a perfect or ideal capacitor. But since we know that nothing like that exists, we will add something to our capacitor to make it real. We're going to add a resistor in a parallel to the capacitor, as you can see here. Now, adding that resistor is actually helping us model a little bit better our insulation because this capacitive part shows us that we actually do have two different voltage levels, whether is it high voltage and low voltage or high voltage and ground or low voltage and ground and we have between two voltage levels an insulator while the resistive element which is generally modeled with a very very high uh, with a very very high resistance is actually here to show us that um, in plain words you can have the biggest possible insulator with the biggest possible insulation in the world but there will always be some current running through that insulator so we can say now that our total current is now the sum of capacitive and resistive current but we know that capacitive and resistive current are shifted 90 degrees in phase so if I want to sum them up, I will need to use a vectorial sum. Now, in this case, what we did, we made IR much, much bigger than it usually is. We drew it like this. Well, realistically, it's not longer than maybe a few millimeters on this um, drawing because and we did it in order to actually make it easier to understand what are we doing. So just to see right now that we have, since we added our re resistor here and resistive current, resistive current is in phase with voltage, which caused that current, 
while capacitive current is leading 90 degrees. So what we see here, what we see here is how currents and voltages are represented in a real insulation. So moving on, we are going to define now a tan delta. So the delta, the angle which we are actually looking at tan delta tangents off is this angle here so this angle here which is usually a very small angle as I said in this case we made the IR extremely too big just to make it easier to understand but this angle is usually less than one degree and tan delta tangents of this angle is IR over IC now, another name for tan delta is dissipation factor. So we can say that tan delta equals dissipation factors. Dissipation factor, they're actually synonyms. So once again, tan delta is the ratio of in-phase resistive current and 90 degree capacitive current. Now, you ask yourself maybe, what is PF? or power factor. Now power factor is very similar to tan delta or DF. The difference is that PF, uh, sorry, tan delta is tangents of IR over IC, while power factor is tangents of IR over I total. You can see it here, which is actually very similar to tan delta if this angle is very small. And as I mentioned before, especially for transformers, this angle will be often smaller than one degree. For some other assets like motors and generators, that angle can be bigger, up to few degrees. But when we talk about power factor, and 10 delta, more or less, they have the same values up to 10 degrees. And 10 degrees is hopefully not the value you will be seeing for your insulation. Otherwise, it means that it's not working properly. So we can see that I total, which is IR over IC, is more or less equal IC if delta is very small. So we can say that tan delta and df, which are synonyms, in practicality are very, very similar in numbers, uh, in, in absolute numbers, to power factor. Power factor is the name which is usually used in North America and some other parts of the world, and uh, Europe, Asia, uh, and some other continents are uh, more focused uh, on using the name tan delta. Moving on, we will add that capacitance and tan delta on high voltage assets can be uh, tested on a power transformer, current and voltage transformer, bushings, generators and motors. In that case, we are doing tip up and tip down test, circuit breakers, surge arresters, actually you can do a tan delta test on any high voltage asset. When we are doing a test of tan delta on a transformer, we always need to short circuit all phases. Of course, if this is a three phase transformer. So if we have two winding three phase transformer like here, we will connect short circuit the high voltage side and the low voltage side. Connecting, short circuiting the high voltage and the low voltage side can be done even with a thin wire because we don't expect big current to run to, to be generated in this test, which is for example completely different from let's say short circuit impedance test in which we have to use very thick wires when we short circuit the secondary side. 
Another important information you can see from this slide is that if we have a three winding uh, transformer with primary and secondary side, we effectively need to measure three capacitances. So it is a capacitance between the high voltage ground, grounding, uh, sorry, high voltage winding and the ground called the CH. We also need to measure the capacitance between the low voltage winding and the ground called CL. And the third capacitance which we need to measure is the capacitance between the high voltage winding and the low voltage winding called CHL. In our next video, in our next um, presentation, we will go a little bit in depth when it comes to this. But for now, these are the capacitances we are going to mention. You can think about what will be the capacitances uh, in a transformer which has a primary, secondary and tertiary winding. And in the next video, we will show you what is the actual solution to that question. So what's the correct answer? When we are talking about ways to express tan delta, there are two ways. We can express tan delta in absolute value or in percentage. Difference is very simple. Percentage is absolute value multiplied by 100. Why we do this? Well, we do it because uh, delta is usually a very small angle, often less than one degree. So if we s and tangents of that small angle is even smaller number. So if we talk about tangents of 0 0.25 degrees, it's 0 0.00436333508. If we multiply it by 100 and round it to the third decimal, it's 0 0.436. And in this case, we add percentage. So tan tangents of 0 0.25 degrees is 0 0.436. Tangents of 0 0.5 degrees is 0 0.872, while tangents of 0 0.75 degrees is 1.309, which makes the whole mm, way of expressing more practical than if we use these numbers here. So now, important part where we say what are the expected and normal acceptable values for tan delta. If we talk about a new transformer, tan delta or dissipation factor needs to be less than 0 0.5. So if we go back to the previous slide, we could see that this would satisfy the measurement, this would satisfy the norm if it's a new transformer, while these two values would tell us that we have a problem with our new transformer. Now, if we talk about service-aged transformers, then if we have tan delta between lower than 0 0.5, that's a good value. If it's between 0 0.5 and 1%, then it could be acceptable. And if it's more than 1%, it should be investigated. So. Why do we say may be acceptable? We say may be acceptable because in 10 delta measurement, it is very important to have a reference value, an initial measurement, which was either done in a factory or the first measurement when the transformer was commissioned. Because um, if we initially measure, let's say 0 0.5, and after a few years, we get to 0 0.8, that's a big jump. And that might lead us to perform some additional tests. But if we, let's say, measure 0 0.5 and then five years later 0 0.6 and then five years later 0 0.65 and then again five years later 0 0.7, if we see that tan delta increases gradually, then probably this will be acceptable value. A value which it shouldn't be acceptable is if tan delta is bigger than 1%. Some additional tests which could help us investigate in both of these cases are also voltage and frequency sweeps, which we will talk about more in our next 
video. So going back to the previous slide, we can see that our service age transformer would also be good if it had the value of 0 0.872, but if the value is 1.3, which is bigger than 1, then our insulation is not good. So you can actually see that if the angle between voltage and capacitive current is uh, just a little bit bigger than zero, uh, sorry, than 89.3 degrees, we already have a critical value. It just goes to show how small the resistive current can be. Now I need to also turn your attention to another parameter. It says all values measured at 20 degrees Celsius. Why is that? It's because we have also a temperature um, correction, which needs to be taken into consideration. The tan delta depends on temperature. So if we have, let's say, tan delta, which is 1 at about 20 degrees, then at 40 degrees, that tan delta will be about 1.5. At 60 degrees, it could be a little bit less than 2.5, etc., etc. So measuring devices for tan delta should have temperature compensation. Our device, and that's something our devices use. If we talk about bushings, there are three major types of bushings, resin bonded in paper, or RBP, resin impregnated paper, RIP, or oil impregnated paper. In that case, our temperature correction for our bushings looks a little bit different, as you can see on this table. So, these were now information that tell us uh, about tan delta and capacitance. They tell us actually what are the what are the information we can get from capacitance. The information is for the bushings. Do we have some partial breakdown between layers, or is there oil incoming into cracks of soil insulation? And for transformers, if capacitance changes a lot, it, it tells us that there was a geometry movement, so something actually physically moved inside, usually windings, and that happens um, when you have a fault very close to the transformer and very big current passes through the transformer, causing electromagnetic forces to move windings. If we talk about tan delta, tan delta can tell us on bushings, do we have aging and decomposition of insulation? Did water come inside? Do we have bad connected electrodes or capacitive layers or some cracks in the insulation or even partial discharges? For a transformer, it tells us if our insulation system is aging, is there water content in the oil and in the paper, and do we have some contamination by particles? So we can say that tan delta tells us more about the insulating system, while capacitance tells us more about the whole geometry of our high voltage asset. So in order to avoid situations like this, please measure tan delta, and I hope to see you on our next video, which will talk about practical ways how to measure tan delta. Thank you very much for your attention, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.